open the meeting this evening. Al Township Council regular meeting, Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. Penny? Opening statement and roll call. Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this regular meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on January 3, 2019. By the copy of said notice to Tritown News and Star Ledger for information and publication on January 3, 2019. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on January 3, 2019. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the open public meetings law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975, Chapter 127. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with emergency exits for your safety. Upon exiting the meeting room, they are to your left and to your right. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Ms. Richmond. Present. Mr. Russo. Here. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Here. Mayor Berger. Uh, she is on her way. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any uh, reason to go into executive session uh, this evening? I'll defer to the town manager. Yes, Deputy Mayor, uh, reasons oh. of litigation and contract negotiations. Thank you. Okay, would you read the statement, please? Sure. Whereas the governing body of the Township of Howell is authorized pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 12 to exclude the public from that portion of the meeting for purposes of discussing specific matters as permitted by NJSA 10 colon 4 12 Whereas the governing body of the Township of Howell intends to discuss certain matters which are deemed confidential pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 12. Whereas at this time the governing body of the Township of Howell cannot determine the time when the discussion to be held in executive session will be made public, but will disclose the minutes of executive session when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the governing body of the Township of Howell that this meeting shall be adjourned to an executive session and the public will be excluded in order that the governing body of the Township of Howell may discuss the items previously listed, and upon reconvening this public meeting, the presiding officer will announce, if possible, the time when and the circumstance under which the discussion conducted in executive session will be disclosed to the public. A motion and a second. So moved. Second, please. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. We will be going into executive session. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Sorry for the delay, please. We were in the back um, in executive session. Are we all ready? Mm -hmm. At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order at 7.45. I can't really Close. see what the glare is. Close, right? 7.45. Uh, February 19, 2019. Are there any reports from... The township Pledge. officials Pledge. or anybody here at Dais. Pledge. Pledge. Oh, please let's stand. What, Penny? Is this mine? I'm sorry. Is this mine? This isn't mine, is it? My book? I don't know. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Can we please stand to say the pledge and then a moment of silence for all of our officers and military. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you. Ladies, I just want to say over there, you really outshone every adult in the room. I only heard you. Thank you very much. <laughs> At this time, may I have a motion for the minutes from February 5th? I would make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, February 5th. I second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. At this point, we're going to come up to the front if all council would help me. So I'll say the names, and then I'll pass them down. Okay. And we'll be like, we'll rotate. So everyone gets a shape with everybody, okay. somebody, OK? Sounds good. Oh, come on. Get over there. Leah, Leah Gervasi. If anybody knows me, I, I really destroy people's last names, so forgive me up front. Leah Shapnoff? Photo. Liana Roselli? Yes. 
Let's resume. Did you? I, I, you just mentioned that. I wanted. Did anybody look outside and see the moon out there? Last night was super moon. Beautiful. I think it's a snow moon. It's, it's right? beautiful it's out snow there. Oh, it's snow gorgeous. Moon. A snow moon? Snow moon. Super. Yeah. Super. Okay. Three, I'll accept yeah. that. Just beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Uh -huh. So let's go back. Are there any reports of? Any officials or anybody here at the dais? I have changes to the agenda, Mayor, if Thank I can uh, read them into the record. Please. Um, added to tonight's agenda, motion 9B7, 2019, renewal. Limo owner's license, Terrence White, dependable taxi and car service. Removed from tonight's agenda. Resolution 9A11, authorized ratification of contract with the Howell Township TWU. Table to the next agenda, meetings agenda. We'll take a roll call on when we get to that uh, item, but it will be ordinance number 0 19 8 10.7, amend 2019 salary ordinance for the TWU. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Brian? Mayor, the only other thing I have is tomorrow's meeting scheduled uh, for the McKenzie House discussion. Um, with the potential weather, we'll be monitoring conditions and make a decision by the early afternoon whether that meeting will be canceled or not. And the meeting is at 4 o'clock? 4 p.m., yes, ma'am. Here. And Just we'll being be clear. posting it to our website and social media and getting the word out as much as possible if we do decide to cancel. 
if I may. Should, um, in an event that it could be canceled, could we select another date tonight before we leave? Could we look at our calendars? Sure. Yeah. You know. well, wouldn't you have to ask the other parties involved? Well, first we have to decide, you know. I, I think it's yeah. a little difficult for us to get all on Yeah, this is page. true. This is true. I'm sure that the other parties will be willing to do as much as they can <laughs> to get more. Just in okay. case. Um, Otherwise, the next meeting. Well, I'm not. Okay. I'm not here next week. Okay. So we're looking the first week of March. Yeah. Okay. If well, we have a council meeting. You know, mm -hmm. It's an option. I would Real suggest quick. prior to the council meeting. If on the fifth. Deputy Mayor, I'm gonna have to. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna have to get back to you on this one. I actually, um, my whole life is my work calendar, which is at my office right now <laughs> <laughs> on paper. So I have to get back to you on that. I can't commit to So okay. uh, all, I'm, all we're proposing at this point is on the 5th, we already have a council meeting. Right. So the proposal is just to see if we could have the meeting a little before oh, that. That's fine. That's okay, fine. Okay. So that. Yep. I mean, and. Mm -hmm. As a tentative backup. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that would and be. And then Councilman Russo, and then Evelyn, you just you'll, email me. Sure. You'll Here's ask the other parties yeah, should, if they're available. You know, yeah. yeah, if we get to that point. Okay. Yeah, then they're not um, against Brian. You'll yeah. contact the other. Yes, thank you. That was easy. That was easy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just in case. Any, nothing else? Then I will go for uh, hearing of citizens. Barbara Dixel. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Barbara Dixel, 62A, Piazza Vittoria, Freehold, New Jersey. I want to ask you a couple of things. Please explain uh, 9A5. Mayor, that's just the release of the maintenance guarantee for a commercial project that's been completed. Okay. Thank you. All right. But, okay. And again, uh, there is no plan or discussion to open the back of the property to Wyckoff Mills Road, correct? Not that I know. They'd have to go back to the because planning that, board. Because it's in the resolution not to. Okay. Yeah. As far as I know, there's no, right, no it's change in, the re in It's in the resolution. I watched that very carefully. Um... 9A12. This is Explain just a, uh, an update of our land use element. Uh, this is our planning board planner that will uh, prepare the report. There will be mostly just changes to uh, conditions and patterns, uh, any new uses we, we see in town. Uh, I think the last one was done in 2017. Um, looking to do this one just for um, same thing, change maybe some zone changes, maybe some changes in uses, and this will go in front of the planning board. Also come back to council. Don't they work uh, with planning board members to do that as well? Yeah, the planning board approve it, and council will approve it too. Thank you. All right. 10.7 is off. Okay. Okay, 9A13, please explain that. Joe? This is a forbearance and settlement agreement among the purchaser of Estelle Lane, the township of Howell. The homeless individuals who currently reside and did reside at the camp and Destiny's Bridge. Um, the purpose of the agreement is to allow them to remain on the property, the people currently there, oh, until hallelujah. what's that? Hallelujah! For until that. March, and then they've agreed to vacate at that point. In exchange, Dr. Roberts will be uh, offering financial compensation to all of the current and former members, um, assuming that they're contactable. And the township's role in it is that we're going to gain the benefit of a settlement and release out of it. Okay. Can I ask you? Uh, are the council 
What was the benefit to this Dr. Roberts for buying this piece of property and evicting and making more homeless people more homeless? What was the benefit to Howell Township besides the fact that you need the money? I want, I want, I want a full explanation so, um, of why. I, I, I'm, I'm a, a full explanation I can't give you, honestly. I, I do have a question, though. We all live here because we choose to, and we choose to purchase things if we want them and we can afford them. So why should I not, or why should anybody not sell something that they can if they no longer want it and somebody else does? But there's a homeless bunch of homeless people living there who really don't have the wherewithal and the means and everything else, and you're evicting them or putting them out in the street, and I think it's disgusting. That, 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 that's actually a black eye for Howell Township. Shame on all of you. Well, I, I respectfully disagree with that assessment. Where are these people going to go? Well, actually, a, a good number of them have already left and have gone to other townships. So there's basically, I think, what, four people? Yes, Mayor. That was the last At this one. point, there's only four people there. And these are the same four people, unfortunately, that have been traveling throughout Ocean Township, Ocean County, rather, not Ocean Township, through Ocean County from town to town and have gone, come here and I... I, I I believe that they will be going further up on Route 9 into another town. We have offered much assistance, Barbara, multiple times. Okay. All right, that's a good-sized piece of property. What, what is expected to be built there, pray tell? I don't know that I'm privy to that. I haven't received that information from him yet. No, nor is the township. There's been no application made. There's been I mean, no plans decided. From, There's been no plans announced. And whatever it is down there, what are they going to decide to put up? Well, the zoning regulations. Another kosher store down there? What are they Wait, put up? excuse me. With all due respect, Mayor, this is America, correct? Yeah. Okay, so people are free. People are fr and this gentleman that purchases property, as long as it's within our application process and the planning board and the zoning board can pretty much build whatever he likes. Is that correct, That's Joe? absolutely correct. Okay, thank you. All right. With reference to Mackenzie, I've been doing a lot of research on Mackenzie. I've been around many, many years. Um, before any action... And actually, for the record, for the record, I just want to say, I'm sorry, no, Pam, but I, I, I really do feel, I, I do take a bit of offense, okay. personally, when you said that, you know, it's a black eye and that, you you know, we shouldn't have well, done that. And, and I respect you very much, Barbara, but, you know, I... I, I know what Brian and Joe have been working on and what they have been trying to do and all the social services that they brought there and that they were shunned away from that. And that, that is not, should not be acceptable. And Mayor, also, Mayor, also I was at the meetings, Barbara, uh, last year when I was getting used to becoming, you know, Correct. thinking about running for council, I wanted to get used to it. And I know this mayor and the council um, worked with these people and worked very well with them and did everything they possibly can do. Uh, I was I was there with you in the audience, and they did a, uh, the best they can possibly do, and and I also take a little offense to that as well. Fine, I'll rescind my say. I'll, I'll rescind my comment. It's just that you know we did work hard on that process. We did. It was a, a, a year long. No other town ever gave permission. We actually were the first ones that ele that said, "Here, please stay here, make it a transitional location," and and you know. And when you say shame on the council, you know, there are some of us that are new to this and that have been, you know, not privy to a lot of the stuff that goes on. But when we do find out what's going on, you know, we did our best. I know the mayor did and our professionals over there. So, you know, no one reports that to anyone else. I mean, it's not really fair to say that, you know, shame on us. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you. What was your next comment, Barbara? What was you? You started on the next thing. And I cut you off. I'm okay, sorry. All right, all right. With reference to Mackenzie. Yes. Uh, I've done a lot of research on that. Um, I want you to please note that before any action is taken, because all of the years it's been laid in disarray and neglect and whatever, before any action is taken to do away with this, you need to know that I have researched the New Jersey DEP. Historic Preservation Office, 
of New Jersey National Registered Historic Places. The Mackenzie is on the historic register. So before anything is taken, anything is done, you people need to know this. I have the deeds. I have the deeds in my possession. Look to the property. It goes back many years. A whole bunch of research that I will have to put together and present it to you, but I do have the deed. It is on the historic register. And so is the Southern Grange. This is it. Okay. Would you mind if I took a look at that this evening? Yeah, you can look at it, but you can't have it. Squankum. That's fine. I just asked to look at it. <laughs> it's called Squankum Mills mm -hmm. Site. Right. The grist mill. Mm -hmm. The grist mill. The Correct. Squankum, squank, the the grist no, mill no, was there. next to or near? Years ago. Near, near, the, near the museum, it was near the, the house. The right. grist mill. I have the whole history. I have right. the deed in the house. But yes, this is the Squankum Mills site. No, I'm sorry. I wanted. Do you have information that said um, that proves that these are registered? This is a registered site, a registered historical site. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Yes. There it is. Okay. Bob, are you planning on um, attending that meeting? Yes, I am. Okay. I I I, re I remember Penny. If you remember a couple of years ago when this came up, I did give you information about. It, 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 I remember about it being a registered about. On something in February, it was incorporated February, and now it's February uh, 1979. I, I know that I gave you something about that because I did research about it years ago. I did it again now. The document in your hand, maybe uh, perhaps before you leave this evening, we'll make a copy of that. No, nope. when I get when I present it, you'll get it. Or you see sorry. it. No, That's it. No, 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 a copy of no, that. No, <laughs> no. Thank you. It's mine. But you will present that when you attend the meeting, correct, Barbara? I'll, I'll let you read it, but I'm not going to give it out. Okay. Just not. Not yet. Okay. Um, anyway, though, but it is a re it's registered. It's on before you people go and destroy it or knock it down and don't decide to paint it or put a roof on it. It is a, it is a registered site in the state of New Jersey. It needs to be protected. Is the, own town, is the old town hall on that list, too? Just Probably asking. It, I, 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 Just I printed, asking. I printed, I should really print it again. I printed the whole historic register, 200 um, 200 entries. Mm -hmm. on, I, 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 I'll have to get a hold of it again, but there were 200 entries on this. And Excuse, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Barbara. I'm sorry. Thank you. But if, if you, I'm sorry in the back, but th this is what I do. If you guys want to have a conversation, you please go outside, because if we heard you up here, then everybody else heard you too, and maybe they were listening to Barbara instead. I'll, I'll try She's at the mic. I'll try and get some of my information together by tomorrow, if, if it doesn't snow, we don't have another. But yeah, but I do have a copy of the deed, and, and I, I have handwritten stuff, and I, mm -hmm. I have all kinds of stuff. Excellent. So, Good. but this is, and I know there's been a lot of question over a lot of years on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here it is. It's in black and white. It is registered. The grist, the grist milk. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. So we need to protect it, and 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 you might, if if the township is wrapped for cash, and you might want to apply for grants. There are grants available, especially mm -hmm. for historic, to preserve history, historic sites. Uh, that might be something you want to think about doing, you know, after tomorrow's meeting or whatever. But yeah, this, this is definitely, and, and all of this stuff now is under the New Jersey DEP. Yes, it is. Right. Brian, I know, um, I think Councilman Bonovich had brought this up, but are there grants that we can potentially look into to see about the financial? We certainly could. One of the issues is the ownership, uh, because we have different groups claiming ownership to it. So that's got to be navigated first. So when uh, the meeting that you're potentially going to have tomorrow, you'll fight out to see who is going to take ownership, and then you can possibly look up grants or money that's out there? Yes, if, Deputy if, Mayor. If, if I might, Mayor. My pleasure. Um, I'd ask for this meeting. I'd ask for this meeting tomorrow, for solely the solely that people can sit down and get the accurate information. Um, it isn't a meeting to give the building to someone. The township owns the building. Yeah. 
It isn't a meeting that somebody wins, somebody loses, that the building's destroyed. This is to sit down and actually bring everybody to the same page, because there's a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. So should the meeting happen tomorrow, um, because the weather allows it to be, um, there could never be a final decision as to anything right. with that piece of property. I'll, I'm not saying anything mm -hmm. final, but just think about saving this museum. It's on the historic register, which means it's officially there, which means it probably means that it can't be whatever, sold, destroyed, done away with, or whatever. It probably means it's got to stay there and be protected. So I think you're aware, Barbara, of, of the work that I've tried to I put know, into I this understand. project. I, so, I, I don't disagree yeah, with yeah. you. So, but I, mean, I just can't. Yeah. There'll I, certainly I, be a fair shake on, on looking at this I, project. Evelyn, I was know. just handed a pile yeah, of yeah. stuff today. Mm -hmm. Documents, deeds. I would just hand a pile of stuff. I'm going to try staying up half a night to get it tonight to go put something together. But yeah. I was on that DEP website this morning, so, so yeah, um, but this it's is, an interesting site. Yeah, yeah but I, I actually had printed off the whole 200 items on the list. And, um, uh, okay. and Howell, though, these were the only two. It, Brian? They're all over the place, but th th this is the yeah. only two, Got it. and it's the Southern Grange, and 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 the and the uh, Squanka Mills site, the grist mill. Brian, one question: When we were there the other day, we, I had asked, "Can we use open space? Um, we have a lot of funds available. Can we use open space funds to, uh, you know, fix up that?" I would have to research that to give you a definite answer. And can we find that out for tomorrow? We'll do. Okay. Believe me, I, I'm not looking to give anybody a hard time. You know, I'm not looking to give anybody a hard time. I, I, oh, Barbara, I, we love I, you. I, I want to save this place as much as everybody else does. I'm here, what, 27 years trying. You know, I've heard this discussion many, many years and many, many times. So, like I said, I came into this much official documentation today, and it's official, and it's all kinds of stuff. And I got to sit up for half a night tonight trying to figure out what to do. Jerry, with do not allow her to sit up half the night tonight. <laughs> That's not, he, he goes to sleep. I sit in the computer. He's, I'm in the computer room. He's in sleep. He's in Z land. And I'm, but no, this is. Yes, Barbara. There, and we'll, be, it tomorrow to, you'll let us, please, you'll reveal. It has to be saved. That's all I'm saying. It has to be saved. Whatever we have to do to spend the money, do the electric, do the walls, the it, it's, it, you have to understand this is 1850. This is, this is many, many years before building code before buildings before uh, there was running water or anything else so you gotta uh, we have to understand that and try to do the best we can but yes it is official therefore we have to deal with it differently I, I just I just want to say we're going to be doing budgets yeah if this comes up on the budget and you yell and scream at us because the budget went too high I'm gonna. This is on videotape, Barbara. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I, remind you I that you, you said pay for all everything to fix it. But there has Do, to be. Does anybody at that day have the the number to fix to to begin to fix it? It's a hundred thousand. One hundred fifty thousand, I think, is what Jim Herman said. One hundred fifty was yeah. your uh, estimate, just to get it up to. That was to say to kind of stabilize well, it with the floor because it's today, dirt floor. Was that printed off today was approximately a hundred thousand dollars whatever like 150 is. Well but different. you know realistically speaking if it's what is it a hundred and plus years old you could they're gonna go in there Barbara they have to lift it. We don't even we, know. We don't know. Correct. If you lift it if it'll even be stable enough to be there lifted are, to put the flooring in. There are engineers that deal I with know. historic I property. know, and I'm you just reminding you the you deal budget. With budget. You know, you're going to laugh at me. You're going to have a good laugh, but you're going to really laugh. I, I, I practically live at Central State because there isn't a nurse or a doctor or a department at that hospital that doesn't know who I am because I'm forever in there getting operated on. <laughs> I, many years. I mean, I, I like live there. And, and, Many, a couple, about five years ago, um, uh, I, I had written Mr. Gribben a letter mm -hmm. uh, to upgrade um, bathrooms, the potties, toilets. Where, did you ever sit on a kindergarten toilet? Mm -hmm. It's like sitting on the floor. 
when you've had stomach surgery and you're stitched up with 40 stitches, go try sitting on one. So, I'm not kidding. So, I sent him a letter and I went on my computer and I printed federal grants for upgrading hospitals and for upgrading emergency equipment. And guess what? In the last couple of times I've been there, the bathrooms are wonderful. They've all been redone. The <laughs> toilets are wonderful. I'm, maybe I had something to do with them getting upgraded toilets and bathrooms. But let me tell you something. Did you ever try sitting on a potty for an, 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 in a kindergarten class? Forget it. When you have 40, 50 stitches in you and, and you're hooked up to intravenous, ain't fun. So I'm just saying, I, 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 I feel that I'm halfway responsible for Central State getting new bathrooms and toilets. Fine. I, I did. I sent that letter a, along with a bunch of federal grants and addresses to write to that they can get funding free. So you could do that for us. Start Tell looking us. tonight and send all those papers. Claire, can we point her to like a grant writing <laughs> or can we make one committee? And Barbara, you can be the chairperson. I'll, I'll, I, you know, I do a lot of research on the computer, but I, I mean, I'll look up things. I will look up like I looked up for Central State to upgrade and 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 preserve historic property that's <clears throat> in in very, you know, not in good. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, Barbara. I believe that this is the beginning of an investigation with the pro with the the property. We're going to be talking about it. We'll be meeting, and eventually, it would be it, whatever decision comes out of it will be the best decision for the project as well as for the town. And but, you can only hope that we. You, I, I appreciate you're there, but tomorrow is day one. I, but so it, give us time to I, gather it, information. In, in the past, it's been passed off. It's been well, it has been, back, but now we I have somebody who it. really is We're in charge. Take it down because it's too much money. Listen, please. This is. Howell's history. This is the people who founded Howell Township. This is Howell's history. I hear you. Gotta try. I hear you. Go All on. I could commit to you is trying. I mean, right? Howell's, Howell's a very old historic town. And just gotta try, but yeah, but it is, it is official. It is on the historic register. Baba, with respect to that, um, paper that you have in front of you. Um, I know um, Penny had asked for a copy, which you're not going to give it to her, but I would be more comfortable if you let our attorney, a township attorney, look to see where this information actually came from. I know you're saying it came from a special website, but not everything on the internet is true, believe it or not. Actually, it, it's the name. I understand. The number on, it, it's not even... There are reference numbers next I, to it. I understand, but I personally would feel comfortable if our township attorney, our professionals, would see that I, I that is actually, in fact, true and not um, like a Wikipedia kind of thing. Listen. Yes? You don't know me very well. So <laughs> it's okay. 27 years. When I, when I say something and I say it's there, it's there. Trust Fair me. enough, but I would, I would like that if our township attorney can have a copy of that. It's That's there. my request. So is the how the, the Grange. It's... it's the only two things in Hal that are there. A hundred million things everywhere else, but not Hal. So, thank you. Let's just thank, thank you, Barbara. I just pray that we can do something to get a grant. There's plenty, of, and I will do the grant money like I did with Central State in the bathrooms. I will do the, I will do the same thing. And we will appreciate it. And thank you very it. much. Thank you. Can I take a peek at that now, Barb? Yeah, you can take a peek. And then, uh, don't you copy it. You look. Don't touch. Is there? Is there? Okay. Do we have security in the building? Because I want to make sure that this document doesn't. Is there anyone else that would like to come up? <clears throat> One at a time, please. Thank you. Uh, no. All right. Wait. 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 I'm sorry. To, for, to give you the respect you deserve, I just give me. A, Two seconds. Are we okay with that? Good. I could I've begin. Tried, I've tried pulling up the story. This is this is all that I can get. <coughs> uh, what does that take? Three. Go, go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one
I just wanted him to listen in case he needed to answer. That's why I'm waiting. Thank you for sharing that, Barbara. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Elaine Taylor, Maxim Southern Road in Howell. Um, I just want to just uh, share my thoughts. Of course, it's about the Mackenzie Museum. And um, I just want to say how important history is to all of us and um, and knowing our history. And it gives us a sense of belonging and understanding of who we are and what we came from. And I feel that we really need to have this place in order for everyone to be able to research and perhaps I have other ideas for this building, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. And it also enables us to not make the mistakes of the past that we've made by being able to look back at our wrongdoings or right doings or whatever. And it also helps us to understand and appreciate the labor and sacrifices of others that have made for us so that we can enjoy in our lives today. History is just so important, and I think that we need to really press on and, and really make people understand how important history is. Not just the building, but the whole act of studying our history and, and being connected to our history. And without it, knowing our history, it kind of leaves us... I don't know if you've read the novel 1984, but they kind of erased history in that book, in that novel. And we don't want to do that. We really want to bring our history to the forefront. And I just think it's just so important to everyone. And just really consider that, you know, when, you're, when you are doing your discussions and, and thinking about the future of the Mackenzie Museum, because it is, it is a vital part of our community. It really is that we need a place for history. OK, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Hi. Hi. My name is Mark Preece. I live at Two Castle Court. I come here tonight. Um, I've been before the council before due to a noise uh, issue at my house. I live behind the, the movie theater, the escape theater. So, um, just after Christmas, I had a, a noise expert come to my property, and he took sound measurements inside my house, and the levels were approximately six times the legal limit. I've been asking the township to enforce their noise ordinance since it was adopted in October 2017, but evidently the township never had a, a noise control officer trained and certified. Have you shared that information with the township? I have, and uh, just last month on January, in the beginning of January, I sent over my noise expert's report to Matt Howard and I got a response back from Mr. Howard, and copied on that email was Mr. Clark, the township manager, and Mr. Herman. And they Mr. Said Gigan that, is the town manager. Okay, Mr. G Gigan. 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 Okay. All right, Gigan. Sorry. Gigan. For Sorry. Your name. Um, so my question tonight is that I was told in that email uh, just a month ago on January 16th that they were in the process of finalizing a shared services agreement with the Monmouth County Health Department to enforce the township's noise ordinance. And I just, uh, I was told that that would be done by the end of February. I just wanted to ask somebody from the council if they could ask Mr. Clark what the status of that is. Sure, I, I'll update you on about it. Um, we've sent a shared services agreement over to the county. We have heard back from the county. We are going to have a meeting with the Board of Health probably in the near future. They have some issues with the particular ordinance that we adopted, so I need to find out from them what it is and uh, what the issues are. So we may end up needing to amend the ordinance at some point, but until I have the meeting with the Board of Health, I can't say for sure. Okay, so in the meantime, there's an adopted ordinance on the books and there's no ability for the township to enforce it. What recourse does that leave me? 
Well, as of right now, we don't have a noise control officer. We don't have a shared services. Um, the alternative is I know that you filed a complaint in the municipal court, so there's certainly that. I mean, you, you, you're able to enforce it. Um, but the alternative is for if you want, we have the information. We'll forward it to the Board of Health, and we'll see if anything the county can do under their authority. Um, but right now, we have to work with them to get a shared services in place. And like I said, they have issues with our ordinance. Well, it's the NJDEP model noise ordinance. I understand so that. Do you, can you just elaborate what the issue is that you are aware of? I will know more once I meet with them, and I'm more than happy to share it with you via okay. email as soon as I know. Um, but they didn't give me any specifics right yet. So as well, soon as I do, I, I promise I'll update you yeah, personally. You me. Yeah. So I'd appreciate that. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Mark, I have a question for you. Sure. Are there other people that live on that block? There are, but my, the, and that's a common question that people ask. Why is it that I'm the only one that's complaining about this? My house is the house that's located directly behind the two IMAX theaters. The other homes, they're all on one acre lot. So the other homes are either just a little bit south, a little bit further east, and they're not as greatly impacted by the noise. They can hear the noise when they're out in their front yard, but we actually hear it in our bedroom every single night. I mean, as I said, when Aquaman was playing, <laughs> they measured levels that were six times the permissible limit. I didn't mean to laugh. It was just kind of funny. No, but it sounds like thunder. I mean, like, if you didn't look outside and see it, if it was cloudy or not, mm. your first inclination is that there's a thunderstorm approaching. Mm. But that's what we live with since the theater opened up in May of 2016. And everybody thinks that, like, I'm just sitting here, like, being like this a big, annoying neighbor. I, I, I promised that theater was going to be, be soundproof, and it's not. Well, I... Okay, but I don't think yeah. that that's what we think. You know, I, I mean, I, I think you see that, you know. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, I'm just giving you a little background, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the situation, and, you know, I'll, I'll stop there, but yeah. I appreciate your response. Yeah, absolutely. You know, let me know what's going on, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, you can understand how I'd be a little bit annoyed that at this point the, the ordinance is on the books, but it's not enforceable, yeah, and there's a difference between filing a citizen's complaint in municipal court and filing a complaint with code enforcement who has the jurisdiction to go out and actually issue a violation notice. I understand completely, yeah. and believe me, it's not for lack of want to look into it. It's, you know, like I said, the Board of Health have, has issues that I just found out about a couple weeks ago, and we're working to set up a meeting with them as quickly as possible so we can look into what you're saying and make sure, I mean, Look, if it's an enforcement issue, I'm more than happy to, to go into court and enforce it. I have no problem with that. So, Well, March 8th is the municipal court hearing. Well, I'm not going to be there and enforce your complaint, but you know, you understand what I mean. So um, I'm more than happy. And like I said, as soon as I find out something, you'll find out something. All I right, promise. And if, if you need me to be a party to this discussion for any matter or my noise expert to be involved because he's trained every single county health department yeah. officer, yeah, so, you know. Um, we're, yeah. we're happy to cooperate in any way we can. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wants to come up? <clears throat> they have it. Mm -hmm. Sandra Solly, Birdsall Road, Farmingdale. I wanted to... Um, say that a, for a building or a location to be historic, it doesn't have to be known for anything outstanding. They only need to be significant and some contribution to the benefit of society. Governor Murphy has a proposal to give tax credits to builders to create new use of older buildings. Patterson Silk Mill made New Jersey famous for years for its manufacture of silk. A home for a home that a woman lived in that George Washington had an attraction to in 1756 is now a museum in Yonkers. It is a Philippe's Manor House, and it looks very similar to the inside of the Mackenzie Museum because it has the registers, the white plank floors, and the wainscoting, and everything about this building looks similar to the Mackenzie. Now, um, he wants to revitalize older buildings that have been empty for years and make them suitable for new businesses or to make them into homes for people. Now, um, 
When people travel, they want to see tourist attractions, the pyramids, Buckingham Castle, the Liberty Bell, the Leaning Tower, the Statue of Liberty, Gettysburg Battlefield, the Lincoln Memorial, etc. What do people come to Howell to see? Big box stores, empty mom and pops, crowded highways. We have the Russian Church, the Grange, the former Preventorium, a TB clinic, one of 68 in the country. They could be a destination site like a lair. But once again, because it's history, nobody feels it's important. But as Elaine Taylor said, history is important. Because if you don't honor it, then you repeat it. And we have to have something that tells, because that site, that gristmill site, that was the beginning of industry in 1801. And even before that, that was a business. Because Squonkum Road was a stagecoach run from New York to Lakewood. So they even had a um, tavern on the corner where Lake Squonkum, Yellowbrook Road, and Squonkum Road, it used to be a tavern, which I didn't realize, but it was called, it was called the Squonkum Tavern. So this, this is our history. We have to honor it. And I'm hoping that tomorrow it's not going to rain or snow like it's supposed to, but we really need to start doing something about this building because it's been sitting empty for six years. Way, way, way too long. It has to be open. I know it's going to cost some money, but it's not going to go, it's not going to be crazy like people are talking because we were in that building for over 20 years and none of us ever felt threatened that we were going to be hurt in that building. Up and down the stairs, in the basement, up in the attic. So if we can do it, other people to do it. And I've been, I have articles that Barbara has also alluded to. The, uh, the basement, if the sump pump had been working, which it hadn't been working for years, then the water wouldn't have filled up in the basement and caused the soil, to, the sand to shift. So that was part of the problem, that the, cep, the cesspool, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the pump wasn't working. So that's maintenance from the town. Township owns this building. So it's time to honor, you know, taking care of our buildings. There's so many that have been allowed to, you know, the Preventorium. Hello? It's 100 years old. One of 68 in the country. And what are we doing with it? We're letting police go in there and search for drugs with their dogs. That's not a good use. I'm sorry. But thank you for your time. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to come up? Does everybody know, just, just saying, when you come into the meeting, there is this list? We should sign it. And then I could call you. Kathy Novak, 16 Stratton Drive. Apologies for not signing the list. <laughs> not necessary. <laughs> I was just being silly. No, I was going to come up anyway. So I, I have a couple of questions. Um, on, on the uh, 9A10, this vinyl cutter and printer for Public Works Department, is that a replacement item, or is that new, and what is it for? It is a replacement item. It was part of last year's capital uh, improvements. It's to update our current sign maker uh, that our DPW uses. Oh, well, do you make signs for the town, like? Yeah, street signs, stop signs, okay. varies. Um, second question I have. Uh, um, has to do with the shared service agreement with Colts Neck. Um, I read that um, Hal entered into an agreement with them, the shared service contract. And I was wondering, has has any um, have has Hal done any work for um, Colts Neck thus far? Yes. And my question is, did it have anything to do with leaf pickup in the fall? Not that I'm aware of. Because regular scheduled maintenance on a pickup truck, I believe. Uh, and there was some electrical issues that needed repair as well. Okay, because um, I know this is a little late to be talking about it, but our leaves weren't picked up until mid-December. And that's the first time that's ever happened. And I've lived here for 34 years. So I never could understand what happened. Um, when they came through with their um, leave vacuums, it was very done very quickly. 
So my question is, what happened with leaf pickup this past fall? I believe there were delays because of the amount of rain that we've been encountering. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Come on up. <coughs> My name is Melissa Ambos. I live at 15 East 3rd Street. I will sign the book, too. <laughs> I was here for a different agenda, but to, I would like to talk about the leaf pickup also because my, my leaves got picked up mid-November, but only a small portion of them, and the rest of them were left there, which is a huge pile because I have two lots that are right next to each other, and I put them all in one nice pile, so it's easy. So instead of going to two houses, you go to one. And so I kept waiting for the leaves to be picked up, and then I finally called mid-December, and they said, I'm sorry, the truck was full. So the truck was full, so they drove away, and then they came, like right before Christmas, they came and got my leaves. Mm -hmm. So that's not really true. Their excuse was that the, the truck was full. It doesn't take a month to turn back around. And I live in Freewood Acres, and we do get terrible service. So, you know, with different stuff, I've had problems with recycling. This past year, I also had a problem that I live next to the Ivy League, and there's dumpsters. And um, there was a bunch of possum that were coming into my yard. And one of them, or I think a couple of them, they ate one of my chickens that I'm allowed to have, and they chewed her face off and left it there. And oh, it was very God. upsetting because my chicken used to try to go on the bus with the kids like she was a pet. And I was really upset, and I called the town, and they said, we'll notify animal control. And I said, can you please, but they're not animal control anymore. It's um, the ASPCA. I said, can you please tell them, to notify me before they come onto my property so that I make sure I'm there. And in the meantime, I found one because I found one and it was in my recycling can. So since I have tenants, I had a can and it didn't have a lid on it. So I found it and I put the lid on top. And I wanted them to just remove it, okay? So in the meantime, while I was waiting for them, I went to Home Depot, I got like a better secure top, you know, because I don't want, you know, I, everything right. I do, I try to do by the book and I, every time there's a problem, I try to fix my own problems. So I look out the window, this man came on my lawn and he took the garbage can and he dumped it out and he was running off my lawn. I said, excuse me, what are you doing? And he says, I'm letting the possum out. I said, I, I wanted you to remove the possum. So he says, that possum I'm not gonna remove. It's a healthy possum. I said, kill my chicken. He's like, prove it killed your chicken. I'm like, well, I have pictures of my chicken. Who is oh. this, someone from the town? No, I said, can you please identify yourself and where's your card? He was with the ASPCA. He says, I don't have a card, and I don't need to identify myself. Here, my jacket has my name on it, and he says, my card is my truck right there, and he points to his brand new ASPCA truck. I said, now I have this possum in my yard. He says, yeah. And he told me that he's had this job for 18 years. And I was so offended that I called, and I waited, and then I eventually spoke to the, the manager of the ASPCA, and she Tried to do, and she felt bad because I told her, like, this is my pet and I'm upset. And she understood. And I said I was taking precautions or anything I could do in the meantime, okay? But she also said that, you know, he's also had this job 18 years, and I've only been here three, and it's going to be very hard to really reprimand him. So it was like she had no power over this man. And so he came on my property when I asked to just be notified because I wanted to tell him of the problem. And he came on my property, and he didn't have identification of who he was. So there was no... So There's why'd no you let him complain. stay? He walked off my property. I said, you, like, take the possum. He's like, I'm not taking the possum, lady. So, you know, I had to go out and catch it myself. So I caught it myself, and I removed it myself. On community, you know, county land, I, I removed of it. You know what I mean? Because I just don't want it to kill my animals, and I have tenants. Mm -hmm. And I don't want a possum running around my yard. I'm not saying every animal in the world should be killed, because that's obviously not what I'm into. But that's not the kind of services that when we pay for things in town, like you think you have animal control or you think you have leaf pickup, we should have good animal control or leaf pickup, okay? And not somebody that tells you, I've had this job 18 years and my card is over there, it's my truck. If you're, you know, if you're a police officer or you're anyone else, you have an identification, 
on you or you did have you a follow up with the ASPCA I did and they said you know what today actually we were at Howell Township and they asked us for identification and um, two of our workers did not have identification because they let themselves onto people's properties because some people have large acreage and they have no proof of who they are and they don't have identification so as the mayor or as people in charge in town I think that's something that when we hire other services other than Howell Township workers we should follow quality control protocols to make sure that they're actually doing a job that Howell citizens would approve of. Okay? So I'm not, I'm not here point. saying, oh, you know, like, Howell, you know, we yeah. live in a good town. Excellent point. And I'm, I'm here for the water. I'm actually waiting for my bond ordinance to go through. So that's why I'm here. So after you talk about that, then I can ask about that, the bond? Okay. But that's my leaf story and my possum story. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come up from the audience? I know there's another one. Come on, guys. No? There's being none. I will close this portion of the meeting. Okay. Consent agenda items. Um, like to make motion, make a motion to move 9A1 through 9A13, and 9B1 through 9B7. Um, Penny, do we have to exclude 9A9? That's a appointment. No. All right. Well, then uh, how about uh, 9B6? 9A6. 9B6. Yeah, five and six don't have that asterisk, which is considered consent. So if you just say I'm making a motion on consent items, I'm going to know that you're going to take a separate uh, roll call on 9B5 and 9B6, which are your appointments to a board or a committee. Okay. So you're making a motion yeah, so I'm on the consent items. <laughs> is yes. there a second? Yeah. I second. <laughs> roll call. Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Okay, ordinances. No, nope, we're going to go back to the motions. 9B5 and 9B6. It's been a very long day. 9B5 was the accept resignation from the Environmental Commission, alternate one member. And, Mayor, these are your appointments, so I don't know if you're ready this evening to make an appointment. No, I have not yet discussed that with the chairwoman okay. of, the, of the committee. Would you like that listed oh, on the you know what? Meeting? I uh -huh. actually, I would like to um, add Jerry Barron, actually, to the environmental. Okay. And so be it. He'll sit Thank as you. the alternate uh, spot that yes, had fish shedded, uh, yes. sat in. Thank you. Was there an appointment for um, Community Alliance yet? Or you're going to wait on that a little the bit? Community Alliance? No, that's, that's next. That's next. The, the, we did receive uh, an application. I just don't remember the Michael name. Michael Pavlik. Yes, okay. Michael. Okay. And that's who that is. Okay. So uh, I would make a motion for 9B1 through 9B7. Oh, wait. Uh, and on 9... No, all we need is 9B5. Uh, 9B6. Nine and 9B6. Nope, you did 9B5. Oh, we did. 9B6 is the only one. So we want to accept Michael Pavlock as the alternate. Hmm. As the term, one-year term, forgive me. Okay. As the Community Alliance member. Yes, ma'am, sorry. That's okay. I know. No, we're really good. I know. <laughs> no, we just can't get through a meeting, can we? <laughs> is there a second? A second. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Um, I Go am ahead. I allowed to make that motion? No. The appointment. Yeah. I need yeah. to, and someone has to make the motion. So could you put in your I motion? I can't make the motion. Mr. Bonovich, the name. Michael Pavlik. Was it Mike Pavlik? <laughs> yeah, Pavlik. Yes. Mike pa Mike, make a motion for Mike Pavlik for uh, the uh, Community yeah. Alliance. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Sorry. That's okay. Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes, ma'am. I'm waiting for you, Penny. <laughs> What's next? So we're going to go on to public hearing on ordinances. That's what I'm up to. Yep. Okay. 
Ordinance 0-19-2 or 10.1, amend ABC Ordinance Chapter 53-10, Hours and Days of Sale. Would someone please read the... I'm sorry, Mayor, that's you. Oh, it's me? It mm -hmm. is. You're making me work really hard. I am making you work tonight. And I'm just not, I'm not going to do it. Do you want it. this? No, I have it here. Okay. Thank you. I think I have it here. There's a lot of them tonight, Penny. <laughs> you're right, you're going to be busy. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Ordinance number 0-19-2, introduced and passed on first reading on 1-22-19 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration in public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of the 1-30-19 is submitted and is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and that copies were available to the general public upon request. Title of Ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 53-10 entitled Hours and Days of Sale of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. Is there anyone that would like to have a discussion on this, on this ordinance? Mayor Barbara Dixon, 62 AP Observatory of Freehold, New Jersey. Good evening. What what type of businesses or what are they talking about? Um, what type of businesses are these? This the, ordinance going to... Um, the ABC ordinance? It's this one, this 10B... 10.1? 10 10. 10 yeah. Uh, liquor stores. Liquor stores. Bars, right? Okay. And... Right, it changes the hours for both retail and consumption licensees. Retail licensees are restaurants, bars, consumption licenses, or cons are package licenses, liquor stores, and that. And what would what would the hours be? What would they be changed to? They are as in the ordinance, so I would have to take a look at it quickly. But mm -hmm. I'm going to see if it's uh, if we have it spelled out. So weekdays is 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Saturdays, oh, but, but 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. That's liquor stores? Retail and both. That's 2 a.m. is a long yeah. time. No, this is for the consumption licensees, which is the, the restaurants and bars. It allows it 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. on weekdays, Saturdays, and on Sundays. Okay. And then for the plenary retail distribution license, it's weekdays from 9 to 10. So right. that's traditionally what time they've been open. So it's just consistent with their practice. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. Guys. Okay. I'd like to see everything just, you know, encourage them to be open a long time. Mm -hmm. Reduce it this better. So I'm just going to, Barbara, are you going to come up again? Because I see you walking. So if you're going to come up again, just stay there. Seriously, don't go back and forth. Thank you. Penny? Yes. Would, uh, is there anybody else that needs to speak on uh, 10.1 besides Barbara? No, I don't see any. So okay, close so this we'll portion. Okay, so close the hearing. Uh -huh. <coughs> right. I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 0-19-2 be finally passed and adopted and that the notice of its passage and adoption be published in a 2-27-19 issue of the Tritown News by reference to its title only. Second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Ordinance 0 19 3, 10 2, Bond Ordinance, NJAW Waterline, New Jersey American Water, and Freehold Acres. Freewood Acres. Free, oh, free, Freewood Acres, <laughs> forgive me. I would like to open this, um, we'll open it up for discussion. No. 
we're going to read the statement first, oh, yes, and then we're going to do the title. Penny, I've been going since this. I know. This is getting tough on you. <laughs> Go ahead. Please. Yep. Go. Do you, need, do you need this? I read it. Oh, you want me to read the... God help me. Ordinance number 0-19-3, introduced and passed on first reading on 2519 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration in public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 2819 is submitted as noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted in the bulletin board in the municipal building and that copies are available to the general public upon request. Title of ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, providing for a capital contribution to New Jersey American Water Company, Inc., in aid of the construction by said company of a water main and laterals and related expenses to serve properties located along various streets in the Freewood Acres section of the Township of Howell and appropriating three point five million therefore in providing for the issuance of three point three two five million in bonds or notes of the Township of Hal to finance a portion of the cost thereof. Now ma'am open I will open it up to the public. I'll close it. Oh no. We have a taker. Hi, Tina Smilick, Charles Street Howell. Hi. Um, this 3.25 loan, who is this a general obligation bond? Is this a utility bond? Is this? That is correct. It is a general obligation bond. So what makes us go with general obligation over a utility bond? As per, excuse me, as per bond council, this, this um, because we don't have a dedicated utility for water surface, we have to use it for for uh, for we have to use it for uh, general general obligation purposes. Okay, and who's paying for it? General obligation bonds are flowed through the uh, taxpayers. And who makes the money off of the water that they're supplying? That would uh, most likely the water company. So we're paying for the infrastructure, and the water company is making the money off of it. We do have a few gentlemen here from the water company that you'd like to discuss it with them. They might be able to educate us a little you better. You council is okay with that, that we're paying for something that somebody else is making money off of? Okay with? No, we're never okay with No. What? No. We're never okay with paying more money than um, for paying for money. You know, for paying. No, we're not okay with it. it with, for them to have to contribute through what they make off of this back to pay this bond? It's a good question. So I think, you know what, these are really good questions, but I'm not sure that we I could answer all the questions. But who are the gentlemen here from? Uh, but how can you vote on it if you can't answer these questions? Oh, I'm Would sorry. you like to, um, please, no, could you come up? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Don't you just have a seat right here? Sure. Thank you so much. Just for the record, if you would, yep. just state your names um, and why you're here, and this way they have it on the record. Okay, Elliot Schwartz, New Jersey American Water uh, Engineering Manager. There is a microphone. If you sit, the microphone is right there. Apologies. Sorry. I'll, I'll, no problem. Elliot Schwartz, New Jersey American Water Engineering Manager. Thank Kevin you. Rodier, New Jersey American Water Engineering Project Manager. Thank you. I think one of our residents just had a question. Yeah, I'm not here to answer questions tonight. What I'm here to do is support the Howell Township and its bond ordinance. We do have a handout that we can certainly provide to the council and anybody who's interested. Uh, and I have a brief statement that I'd like to share, if that's okay. Sure. Right. Thank you. Kevin, I'll let you pass out anybody. So uh, let me take a step back. Uh, since 2015, working with Mr. Herman and other professionals of the township and previous administrations, uh, New Jersey American Water with Howell, uh, associated with the sewer project, we were contacted and we were asked to facilitate water main construction uh, through Freewood Acres. As we explained then, as we'll explain tonight, New Jersey American Water is a New Jersey State Board of Public Utilities regulated utility. Under 
BPU regulations, regulated water utilities are not permitted to use ratepayer funds to invest in third party, i.e. developer, municipal or homeowner, et cetera, water system extension projects. Due to this regulation, New Jersey American Water is limited to the level of project financing it can provide. This information was relayed to the township, at which time the township governing body examined several options for funding the project. Uh, the township initially explored uh, uh, working with the state, going the legislative route, and when that wasn't successful, uh, it was suggested that we work through the New Jersey Infrastructure Trust, which is now today known as the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank, and working with Bond Council and Jim Herman and others, uh, we came up with a tri-party agreement, which New Jersey American was the entity to, to prescribe the loan, and there was to be a certain payment uh, structure. What happened was basically the infra infra infrastructure trust changed their rules, and when that became apparent that that would not be a uh, way to fund the project, uh, this is basically at this point the only way that this project, if it's to move forward, uh, can be uh, facilitated. To the extent that New Jersey American Water does receive revenue on projects, uh, there is a certain amount of money that can be given back to the township uh, as a result of bona fide connections. Uh, if we have a must connect ordinance, then there's a greater propensity. If we have just, if we run the water mains uh, and only a certain number of people uh, hook up, then we provide the township with that, with that part of the revenue. But to extend <coughs> the cost of the water mains, I think it was said somewhere about $3.3 .3 million, uh, the, the revenue that's generated versus the uh, expense of the ex extension doesn't, doesn't match out. What I will also share, and you're free to read this at your leisure, uh, is that New Jersey American Water did take a look at the overall project, which is somewhere in the order of about $5 million, and we basically said that there's a benefit to us to extend certain mains to loop our system. So th it's not like it's we're saying to Howell Township, the whole thing needs to be paid by you. There's a portion, I want to say $1.4 million that we put in the, here tonight, which, you know, Howell moves forward with that portion under that agreement. We're prepared to move forward with our portion under our, our big picture of, of, of the improvement. So you're only giving, we're only paying $1.4 million. No, it's a $3.35 million, I think that was the number. But $1.4 is your portion of it. No, $3.4 is the township's portion. New Jersey American has a looping portion of about $1.4 million. Okay, in the beginning you said that um, you had, our original plan was you were going in for a loan that you didn't get. What I you were going to pay for something and you didn't get it, so now we're paying? What I said was first, the township went the legislative route thinking that there's can be acquired that way. When that didn't work, we then went as the applicant. New Jersey American Water was the applicant for the NJEIT, New Jersey Infrastructure Trust. There was a agreement that was created, a three a tri-party agreement between New Jersey American Water, Howell Township, and I want to say Monmouth County Infra Infrastructure. The improvement Authority. Improvement Authority. So there was always a basic going to be a payment by Howell Township in that regard. The reason we're not sitting here tonight voting on that was because the NJEIT or NJIB, New Jersey Infrastructure Bank, basically has changed their rules and the financing was very low as far as their prioritization. So there was little chance of that being the mechanism to fund the project. So no, New Jersey American wasn't, go New Jersey American was the applicant but it was backstopped by a side agreement that would have been signed by, by three parties. So is everybody still paying the original payment that they were going to pay in the beginning? You said there was three parties each were going to put in towards no, it. No, no, what I'm saying, the, the middle party, Monmouth County Infra, Infrastructure, help me out there. The, one of the original proposals, because, because New Jersey American <laughs> Water holds the permit, uh, holds the master water <laughs> permit. The any financing for the for the water portion of this project had to go through New Jersey American Water, and we had tried researching various options using the infrastructure bank. Um, as we said, their um, um, amendments that they had processed to their to to their drinking water plan um, 
reduced um, 0% financing from 75% of the project down to 25. Uh, so we also looked into coordinating an arrangement with the County Improvement Authority to maybe doing financing um, through them as well. Um, and that through Bond Council wasn't able to materialize and through um, with uh, the sewer project going on and the roads being being open now and, and, and having the ability to do uh, this, then th the only viable option was to go and get market rate. I agree. The water needs to go in. Sure. I, I totally agree with okay. that. I just have a problem with who's paying for it and who's making money off of it. Well, I mean, as I said before, we don't have a dedicated utility that has specific users. This area is in the New Jersey American Waters of uh, uh, a franchise area, so there is no utility that that can be charged for this. No and users. at the end of this month, we have a meeting because they want to raise their prices on water. Also, correct? I I I believe so. But so we're paying for their infrastructure. We're going to get an increase in water rates, and we're all going to pick up the expense for it. Is basically how it works. I mean, the project of the water line is no different than the, than any other capital project in the sense of paying the money back, it's no different than any other capital project that the capital that the project, council. yeah, something that mm -hmm. if we owned it, I would say yes, it's a capital project. Absolutely. Absolutely. We own it, we are gonna make the money off it, we are gonna service it. This is a totally complete separate entity from what we are. So at this time we are paying for somebody else to make money off of the taxpayer dollar. Is that allowed? I, I mean as as uh, <coughs> the Township is permitted through bond law to make this capital contribution in order to get this project completed. Um, it's it's yes the 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 township is not going to own the water line at the end of the day. And we're not going to make money off it, and the taxpayers are going to pay for it. It's an improvement for the area. Okay. Your decision at council. I just, I know it has to be done. It definitely has to be done because the water needs to go in. I just feel that it's really neglectful to use taxpayer money and let somebody else make money off of it. I mean, we, we're paying what's the, here. What, what's the, what is alternative? The, what is the alternative? So there might not be an alternative, but at least if you're going to approve this, I'm, I'm I just want asking it on the record for my own education. I, I would think that you know we we pay good money for our professionals, I mean, is this the last resort? There is no other solution at all. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. This is the only thing we Mayor, can do. The, between myself, uh, Bond Council, Jim Herman, Brian, Joe, we researched ad nauseum as many options that we can, could at the time, going, going to the County Improvement Authority, going to the Infrastructure Bank, um, and I'm with sorry, the sewer I roads. That's, please, there's somebody is speaking. Don't be disrespectful. It's not appropriate. With the with the sewer project uh, uh, commencing and with you know the whole not wanting to reopen the roads to put to put the water lines in, all want to do it in one you know one continuous package. Um, time became of the essence, and unfortunately, we tried our our we tried very diff. We tried very hard on trying to trying to secure some alternative kind of funding because New Jersey American Water is going to be the owners of the water line. It made it very, it presented many challenges in trying to come up with a, a, a viable solution. Um, now, this is going to be a tax and participation note. Is this going to be directly a general bond? Uh, we will we will float a bonnet anticipation note until the costs are final, and then we will lock into uh, lock into permanent financing. So about three hundred and three point two five million. About how much does that add to our budget? Well, the the useful life of the project is uh, forty years. So if we were to get a bond singularly on this, it would on be for this, forty years. Then we would be able to amortize that cost for forty years. For for uh, 40 years. Normally, if this was included with other ordinances, then what what we do is we take that factors in with the other useful lives of the other bond ordinances that about are About how much do you think that would add to our budget every year? Uh, well, it's, it, I mean, if you just do the, just the down and dirty math, 
so the principal itself is about 80000 and then I don't Correct. know what else you pay on that. Correct. Well. So it would be determined at the time whether it would be prudent to include this on its own by itself. On its own by itself would be a, I would say probably, like you said, with, with principal and interest, I would estimate a $100,000 increase. Okay. Um, but as you said, that can also be included if when we were to go into bond, that would be included, and then it would bring up, it would bring up the the useful life of other bonds. Say where we might be able to only bond for something for ten years because we have a certain amount of ordinances. Because you have that forty year useful life, that could extend that to maybe fifteen twenty years, something of that. Okay, but nature. It's only going to be useful for us for really two years because we're handing it off in two years. Correct, but uh, uh, we're paying for it. And once we hand it off, we don't have to make any kind of repairs. If something happens to it, it's fully in there. To my knowledge, it it, it will be. To my yes. knowledge, we want to make sure no, that I, once we get it out of our hands, it has to be strictly it, there. It will be strictly their property. property. It is not. It is not the ownership of the township. Okay, I just want to say I'm disappointed with this deal, but I understand why it needs to be done, and I understand that it's very important that these residents get water, and it will add value to that area. I just want to say I'm disappointed in the deal, and I know there's nothing you can do about it, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Uh, just one, yes, sir. one question. You brought up the, the Force Connect. What is the lump sum payment? How much is that? We had estimated approximately $1,600 per unit. Uh, but there is no must connect ordinance at the present time. But what's the total lump sum? To Something of about a million dollars. That will be paid by our residents. No, what? The, no, just the opposite. No, it's lump so, sum. It would so come it off of. Come off the three three point three five. Could be reduced. And those were conversations I've had with Mr. Herman and others within the company, uh, within the township. My apologies. And, and that's just re as far as residential connections? What about um, commercial? There's, again, we've estimated uh, how many we've estimated. Yeah, it's approximately a million dollars. Okay, thank you. Did, this, did somebody want to comment? You have to come up here. Hand this out before she comes up. Excuse me, can I ask a question? These, did the residents of Freewood Acres all receive these? Absolutely. They have not? No, absolutely not. Okay. No. Is that what you were going to say, Melissa? Oh. Yeah, that's okay. What I'm sorry. I, I just. Okay. This is the first time anyone's seeing this. This is the first time I've seen okay. this, and I check my mail every day. I'm very yes. much into checking. I, okay. Before you sorry. Begin, and then please, uh, we've come here tonight to support your ordinance. It would make little sense for us to pro provide these to the residents of Freewood Acres ahead of an ordinance if it didn't get passed. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, but if the ordinance does get passed tonight and we're able to move forward, there will obviously be. Uh, township communications and meetings with residents to talk about next steps and things like that. If I can add, that was the mailer that Jim Herman was discussing at the last meeting that we're waiting for this final piece to fall in, fall in line so we can start pushing the information out to the residents. Thank you, Brian, for clearing that up. We got some. Also, also, Lou or, or Brian, I don't know um, who can answer this one, but there's a public safety issue here as well, right? I mean, as far as getting water, and God forbid there's a, a fire. I know there's five, 600 homes there. Yeah, there will be fire hydrants included okay. with this project. Okay, with the project, was that paid for? That would be part of the project. As Great, well. okay. Well, that's a good thing, too, for our fire department that we have, you know, because, you know, they load up around the street with their... So I live in Freewood Acres, and, um, you know, I have a couple houses. That's sort of my last meeting. I was concerned about that because I'm in the middle of building and my project got stopped due to the fact that some questionable things with Board of Health, septics, sewer, you know, it really held me up. And until your sewer, until this, this water project is passed, you have to start, or you're going to start where you already started, is that correct? So you're going to go back into the sewers that, where the sewers were just connected? Are you starting where, you, where they started the sewer project and you're coming back around? So you're going to reopen the street, is that your plan? We have to sit down with the township and talk through a plan of exactly how they want us to proceed. So that was not discussed already? No, it hasn't been discussed yet. Yeah, if, oh, if, if this would get approved, we, the, the water would follow right behind the sewer, start, starting on the west side. Are you going to continue with the sewer project while you're working on this water project? Yes. So you're going to continue hooking us up, like following the same plan that you've been doing? 
You're not going to stop everything. No, the, the sewer the project water. will continue. This will, they'll fall right behind. Thank goodness, because, you know, that's really the clincher. And at the same time, another thing that I'm concerned about is I have the option for city water or to not have city water. Is that correct? In the current legislation? I believe we, can, we cannot mandate any at this point. We don't have an ordinance that mandates. No, we don't have a must connect at this point. And are you planning to do that? I would have to discuss that with Mr. Herman. So as of right now, I do not know. So you have not discussed this in the past with Mr. Herman about having like a, like a must connect? No, I have not. Okay. And is there any fee associated with hooking up to the, to the water? So the sewer, there's a hookup fee, but there's no other, there's no hookup fee associated well, with the water? We don't know New Jersey Americans. We, we haven't got have into. To that. So there is no connection fee. There will be some responsibilities of the homeowner related to bringing out a service line from their side of the house. Typically, we run our service line from the main to the curb and install a meter pit. But from that point to your home, that part of that service line is your responsibility. If you have an existing well, that well would need to be abandoned in accordance with NJBEP or health department regulations. And if you decided you didn't want to do that, then that well would have to basically be backflow protected in such a way that we don't receive any, your, your well water doesn't come into our potable water main. Okay, as a, a regular person, mm -hmm. as a can way. you explain that in, um, layman's terms because let's say I wanted to keep my well to water my lawn or my gardens like would I be able to again if you decided I want New Jersey American water to serve my home but I want to have a well to do ancillary things outside my house what I'm saying to you is we would need to have you install a backflow device and go through the process that's associated with that I understand you're a layperson and probably even the term backflow device I mean, I mean, we know what the I'm valve, talking. right? It's a little bit more than a valve, but it's it's a device that ensures that if there was an event okay. in our system or your system, that the water from your system, which we don't know the quality and uh, potability of, doesn't backfeed into our system. And how much would that be? Would you happen to know how much those are for a small residential house? They vary. I mean, okay. you're probably looking at a couple thousand dollars. A couple for the backflow Be between, device. No, between the service line and or abandoning your well or installing. Okay. You're, again, you, you, you should probably be talking with local plumbers and well drillers. I have, and like I have had, I've had uh, only for the sewer. So you see, for the sewer, I have to prepare and pay for out of pocket to dig out to the street besides pay the MRSA permit fee. Um, so that fee, I'm going to pay a couple thousand dollars. My one property is 150 feet from the street, and the the field is not straight in front. So it's going to be, you know, cost me some some money. So is this going to, like, the, when I have to dig out for my sewer, is it the same line? Like, is it pretty much, you know, not the same, obviously not the sewer line. I, whatever, I think the question is, do you have to re, re, re dig a different ditch? As far as the spacing between them, I believe DEP requires uh, 10 foot spacing between water and sewer. So there's two but, lines. but again, I would, you know, and when I say there's no connection fee to the sewer, Whatever Howell Township has as far as a plumbing permit or thing like that, that's outside of New Jersey American. Would you happen to know that? No. Gosh. I don't know off the top of my head. That sounds like I'm going to, like, i got to estimate it's between, like, three to $5,000 to do the dig out for, for the sewer. Okay? So that's three to $5,000. So now 10 feet over here, is that going to be another three to $5,000? Is that's what I'm, you know, that's, you're talking a neighborhood that, like, that, I'm okay, but I'm not rich. I just happen to pinch my pennies by living in a lower income neighborhood, you know, because when I first bought a house, that's the only place I could afford. But some of my neighbors are pretty low income and they're very nice people. Some of them have been around a very long time. So everyone is okay with the sewer project, even though they don't really know the cost because they think they're getting water. But I don't think that people know that they're going to pay for two hookups. That is it. He's saying I have to dig out the line. Do you know what I mean? That that's well, like your That's why we encourage people to wait. That way you're only having your contractor come out and do it once. You know, even if they're digging two separate trenches instead of paying them to come out two different times where it's going to be Well, they have to come back with, you know, with heavy like equipment to dig it. Ditching. Like a right? ditch bogo as long as but the people it, on the west side they've already 
had to pay those expenses, but at least I'm on the east side, so it might work out for me. If, Wait, if I could set up the infrastructure ahead of time before your, before your water comes in and set it up so it's waiting for you, save money. Can you? Yes, but I don't want to sit here today and tell you to do that and something falls, falls awry. I don't know if the ordinance gets... Well, I'm well, in the I middle mean, of a construction loan, so I'm actually like planning a budget with the, with the contractor, so I have But that just doesn't sound like, months. right now, like in this, at this time in the weather, to dig something might not be a good idea if they're not coming in right and back you be after digging. I'm in the middle of a construction loan with the builder, and no, I'm I in get the process it, of budgeting. So I'm budgeting like five thousand here, ten thousand there. So I really actually need to know if I'm paying fifteen thousand dollars. I have four properties, four hookups. So I need to know if I'm like going to be out thirty thousand dollars this year. So it actually really does matter for me. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. Three to six months ahead, like you know, I still like to know what I'm spending in three to six months from now. Most people do that. You know, that have kids and a family, and I don't just use credit cards. I try to pay for it with the money that I saved, you know, so I budget it. So I just, I wanted to know there's, like, specifics, because I didn't know that. I'm happy to know. And I, my best answer would be if the ordinance is passed tonight, then we're obviously working with the township and its officials, and I would see that we would have a township meeting uh, with residents in the coming month. In the coming month. And how long do you think that you sitting down with Howell to... to to go through the plans of the sewer of the water project. How long is that before you break ground on your project? How long does that usually take when you go to a town? We're prepared to go move pretty quickly on this. So I mean I'd be shooting from the hip a little bit. But yeah, I have gotta think we're probably well well let me take a step back. I don't know how old townships process. So they adopt the ordinance tonight. They have we've offered them an, uh, an, an agreement for them to execute and fund. I don't know how quickly they can do that. But let me take a step back. That it, the paperwork aside, if I have the knowledge that they're moving forward in that direction, okay. we sit down with them. We start to procure material and things like that. So knowing that that's fast forwarded in that regard, my my shooting from the hip answer probably is 60 to 90 days is when we're starting to put pipe in the ground. So by the time Howell is ready to say you can go forward, you can be up and active in 60 to 90 days. I would say that's a relative okay. good. Estimate. And on, on your end, even though we've been waiting for this for a long time, so you're pretty prepared for this moment. Yes. When this goes through, like how long do you think that part before the 60 to 90 days is going to be before we can take action? If it's approved tonight, we'll run it by bond council and take direction from them, but we're anticipating to move forward as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. We're trying to time these simultaneously as close as possible. I agree. So, okay. So you think maybe four months? I can't tell you well, that I off the top of my head. For your specific street or anybody's specific street, we're not at that yeah. granular level yet. Okay. Thank you for mm -hmm. your information and your time. Thank you. Penny, what are we up to? <laughs> you any other people that want to speak on the bond ordinance? Is there anybody else that wants to come up to talk about this ordinance? Let's close this portion. Give me a minute. And up to a council member to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion that ordinance number 0-19-3 be finally passed and adopted and that the notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 2-22-19 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. I second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Reluctantly, yes. I'm sorry. But everything that the resident came up yeah. to say this evening is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I mean, the residents here in the town are going to be paying for the project, basically. Mm -hmm. And the town itself is, doesn't benefit from it. I mean... Let me rephrase. We do benefit. The people that are living in that area do benefit. I get it that, I mean, if we can go with the 40-year, I think that was great. Um, I think that was a good resolve to a not a good problem, but... Again, a must connect gives back the township about a million dollars. I understand, but, you know, the, let's be fair. I don't know that the, this is... A, in this area of the town, I don't know that the people there can afford to do that. Understood. And again, it must connect 
I, I will say this on the record, obviously. We're not suggesting that the water main gets in the ground and uh, literally people have to hook up the next day. We're willing to work with the town to craft a must connect. So we ask that something happen relative to a proposal, but no different than the sewer ordinance, I believe you've given people a certain amount of time to connect. Same thing with the water company. We're not expecting that we drop the water main and people have to cook, connect within 30 days. We're, we're willing to give that some, some wiggle room very similar to what the township has adopted on the sewer side. I know I, I'm like speaking out of turn at this point, but I mean, is there anything that maybe you could do with the residents? Relative to? Relative to the cost of hooking up? We have, we've put a lot of things, again, not included within this, but I've spoken with bond council before. When we said to you 3.3, let me make sure I say it correctly, 3.4 million as per the handout, uh, that's stripped out of a lot of costs of our own inspection and overheads and things that we would normally charge. We've, we, we're absorbing those. That's not even included in that price. Again, a must connect. We give the township back a million dollars plus for the connection, so that's always a good thing. From your perspective, I understand that at the end of the day, uh, it's not... It, it's perhaps not, I think somebody else said, it's not the, the most desirous from the, the township's perspective to do this, but with your professionals, this has been, we've, I've been coming here since 2015, and we've tried to, both the New Jersey American and with, uh, with Howell Township, have tried to find basically any other alternative other than what's happening here tonight. And, well, and, and we're against the rope now, given that the sewer main is actually going in the ground now. I have one more question sure. maybe you could think about. So as in, we have one resident here tonight that has multiple homes in the area. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you could possibly do if there are multiple residents, or even if it's just one resident that has multiple dwellings in that one area, is there anything that you could possibly do to work with them if they want to sign up? If you could kind of look at that process, maybe it be a longer time for paying it out or I, again we're not charging residents anything for their connections okay there is no there okay is no charge but it's on. okay okay fair enough I'm it's sorry it's okay so I, I have actually a question and again this is all new to me too and you know I completely understand what you know Tina was saying before but I do have a question so the the million dollars we, we, we get back we possibly potentially can get back the township gets back right absolutely. how does that benefit the residents of that area, if the township is getting it back, and again, I might sound like I, it's a, it's a ridiculous question, but how does it benefit the residents when the township is getting back that money? I understand it probably lowers some costs, lowers our budget number, but could you help shed some light on that to make me understand that? So as I said before, in order to finance this, we're going to do temporary financing. So once I wouldn't want to lock into something on, on, on a more permanent basis, knowing if the true cost is actually less than the $3.4 million that was authorized. So the ability to do the temporary financing allows us to, um, you know, to only pay a certain amount. And then once that final cost is locked in, then, then we would be able to permanently amortize that cost at that lower rate. So that's, so that's basically we're going to be locking in at a lower amount as opposed to bonding for the full 3.4 and then having to cancel it off the surplus every year or something along those lines. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up just yeah, so sure. everybody understands. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out. Are we ready for the next? Next item, 10.3. At this point, I would do Ordinance 0 19 4, 10.3, amend Chapter 2 43, Shade Tree Commission. Ordinance number 0 19 4, introduced and passed on first ordinance on 2 5 19 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration and public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of the 2819 is submitted and is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building and that copies were available to the general public upon request. Title of ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 2-43 entitled Shade Tree Commission of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. I would like to open this portion of the meeting if someone wants to discuss 
this this ordinance closing this portion of the meeting I'd like to make a motion that ordinance 0-19-4 be finally passed and adopted and that this uh, and and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 222 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only may I have a second I second Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Ordinance 0-19-5, 10.4, amend chapter 256, signs, section 5, permitted signs in businesses. Give me one second, I'm sorry. I'd like to open this portion of the meeting for public comment. Mayor, you're going to read your statement first. Oh, I will read my statement. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Ordinance da uh, number 0-19-5 introduced and passed on first reading on 2519 and published according to law is now being taken up for further consideration in public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 2819 is submitted and is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building and that copies are available to the general public upon request. Title of ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Hal amending chapter 256 signs, section five permitted signs in business and industrial zones of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Hal. I will open this portion. Mayor, I'd like to say something. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. No worries. No, 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 go, go right ahead. Um, just one question. They're inside this ordinance. It says something about residential, all residential. Are there signs allowed in any residential areas in the town? What section, Tina? I'm looking at the ordinance now. Um, I don't know. You put two different things up. You didn't just cross it out in the same thing. So, um, one of the one of the one of the marks uh, talks about residential. I just want to know if any residential is included in these signs. Hmm. It says all signs permitted in residential zone. Yes. So those what does that would mean? be uh, probably parking signs or no standing or? I'd like clarification. I mean, I don't want to see a yeah, billboard in I my neighborhood. It, Mayor, but I know that there are certain signs that we permit in the residential zone, and so ordinance. those uses are continued in here. So. so it's still contingent on what is in the ordinance for residential zones. It just says all signs. It, it's very confusing. Right. It says all signs mm -hmm. permitted in residential zones. So now you go to the residential zones to see what signs are permitted. Okay. So it's a, it's a cross-reference to whatever signs okay. are permitted. In That's what zones. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't allowing any different signs. It doesn't create any new rights. Great, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Barbara. Mayor, are there any uh, business, a business signs, are we talking about any type of businesses in residential zones with business signs? There are, I guess there are some areas like, in uh, town that. Nine along the villages or along um, other areas in, on, in the township that have businesses along the highway. But what would. What, what, business signs at all. So are you, the question is, are we going to put business no, signs? I'm talking about any, uh, business signs or lighted signs or whatever height signs or any, what, what type of. This ordinance pertains to signs in business and industrial zones. The business and industrial zones in the town? I don't have a zoning map in front of me, but this is specific to those zones. Okay, I'll rephrase my question because it's very ambiguous. Um, all right, when it comes to business zones and businesses, whatever, sometimes the signs that go up are kind of offensive. They're very bright. They're like Yankee Stadium lights. A lot of these applicants don't get it. You know, there, there are ways of advertising your sign, advertising your firm, putting up your lights and not having it look blaring like Yankee Stadium, where people around you and back even the side of you are absolutely impacted. Um, you know, can something be done or something wording to go in that would prohibit a, a lot of these 
I believe that we have ordinances currently in place that regulate the types of signs and the number of signs that any one business can have. Do right. we not have those ordinances in place? Right, we do, and that's exactly what this ordinance is doing. It's establishing the various types of signs that can be constructed in the business and industrial zones, and it provides some design standards for those signs. Right. If you're talking about lit signs and lumens and that type of thing, I, I would have to look. I can't recall if they're specifically general. addressed. I'm just asking that some of these signs are really offensive and bother people behind them and around them. And, um, and also when you go down all the business signs, um, uh, uh, when you pass certain businesses along the highway and you don't see a sign, and then you pass, you know, oh, Brad, I wanted to go in there. Is there a way of, of including monument signs on the side or in the front? Uh, like, um, I know Walmart recently put up a monument sign that's nice and easy to see, pleasant on the eyes. But some of the, can, can people put up monument signs sometimes as you pass by on the highway in Route 9 and look at these things and see yeah, if you that, want to go into the business or whatever? Monument signs are one of the permitted signs in this ordinance. And also, Barbara, that would be up to the business owner. Um, that's their discretion. I don't think we can, as a governing body, force a business to use a no, particular sign. I'm just asking, Ken, that some, sometimes, just that when uh, signs in general, not to be offensive, to be calming. No, I understand. Lights, you know, lights, lights down, not up like Yankee Stadium, because some of the candles in these businesses, you know, are so bright. You so, in the I, I, I live across the street from you. I'm, you know, I'm in Moore's Landing. I'm the other side. So I, I understand what you're saying. Um, but again, I don't think this, uh, like what Joe said, creates any new rights. And I think what you're referring to is up to the business owner and not up to us. At least if I may, there are some it's lighting right restrictions there. included there are. in oh, this ordinance. If you oh, check yes. 10. If you check, if you there check. are some lighting restrictions included yeah, within this. Yeah. I would just like to see some calmer things. Cause I, know when, I know when you <clears> live behind the sure. residence, behind uh, highway development, I know you have to be prepared to have some kind of intrusion on your life. Barbara, excuse me. If you go to um, Section C, Standard of Business and Industrial Zones, and then you check 4, 5, and 6, um, it actually gives you information on the illumination and the lighting and all that good stuff on the, on the signs. It does, there are restrictions. I'll have that in front of me. Okay. And I can assure you that our planning board, particularly Mr. Tannenhaus, is on top of the lighting. <laughs> Anybody who knows Mr. Tannenhaus. So. Something a little bit more friendly. There's also provisions on the LED signs on the, um, on the timing of any flashing thing. So um, number 10, we should just give you a copy of this board, but uh, electronic signs are not permitted to contain animation. Uh, an ad and shall not change their message faster than every five seconds. So they try to limit exactly what an LED sign is doing so that it's doing its job and it's promoting a business and not being a distraction to the driver. Does right, that they, help? They, right. Now the sign in front of 7-Eleven, um, on 7-Eleven that sign is very, very, very high. And also by Kentucky Fried Chicken, that's very high on most of the signs. Of way over, I think, the, the township allows. To, how, how do people get away with that? Joe, was that put in prior to the ordinance? Yeah, I they were grandfathered in, right? Say, it may, it's probably a pre-existing non-conforming use. That would be my suspicion, yeah. but I would have to look at it. So, conforming. Barbara, if they actually want to go back and change the sign, they'd have, they would be under the purview of our new ordinance, ordinance, which puts it nice, yeah. it puts it lower. And I do agree, it's, it is pretty high up there. Those two signs are so high, you can barely even see what the right is. Yeah, on a cloudy day, I know, right? These big iron stanchions that are holding the sign up. I know. And interesting that they would pay, that the store pays money to advertise their establishment, and yet it doesn't seem to be conducive for a quick read when you're driving, so. It's hard to see those two particular I signs. I agree. Um, all right, anyway, thank you, Just sit here. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. What are we up to, Penny? Um, I guess, I see if anyone else wants to speak on oh, the side. Would anybody ordinance? else like to come up to talk about this ordinance? We're closing this session of the meeting. Section, session, section. <laughs> 
I make, I'd like to make a motion that ordinance 0-19-5 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 2 19 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes, ma'am. Ordinance number 0 19 6 10.5, amend chapter 188, section 231, land use, signs in commercial area. Oh, I just read that one. No, it's, it's, no. No, no, this is the land use oh, okay. portion of it. Uh, signs in commercial areas. Ordinance number 0 19 7, introduced and passed on the first reading on 2519 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 2819 is submitted and it is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building and that copies were available to the general public upon request. Uh, title of ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 188, Section 231, signs in other commercial areas of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Howell. I would like to open this portion of the meeting. Is there any discussion? Can I ask what type of signs you're talking about? Because it's very general. I don't know. The purpose of this ordinance, it, it, what we've done is we've taken all of the standards and all of the different types of signs and we've put them into the prior ordinance. Before this, some of the standards were located in Chapter 188, Section 231, so we had differing sort of sections within our code where different standards could be found. They're now consolidated in Chapter 256, Section 5, and this particular ordinance is now being amended to refer people to the new section. It doesn't have any of its own standards. Can I ask you what type of signs this includes or is for? It refers to, it doesn't have any. It now refers to the ordinance that was just passed. It used to have standards, and for the sake of clarity and consolidation, it now refers people to new chapter 256, section 5, the one that just passed. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that has any comment on the ordinance? Closing this portion of the meeting. Make, make a motion that ordinance number 0-19-6 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 222-19 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. Second. Second. Sorry. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Yes. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes, ma'am. Ordinance 0 19 7 10 6, amend Chapter 7 traffic schedule. Ordinance number 0 19 7, introduced and passed on first reading on 2 5 19 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 2819 is submitted and it is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and that these copies <coughs> are available to the general public upon request. Title of ordinance. An ordinance of the Township of Powell appealing and replacing Chapter 7, Schedule 7 through, um, through streets of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Howell. I would like to open this portion of the meeting. Is there anyone that wants to discuss? Do we have salary order? This is a uh, traffic schedule. Traffic, uh, yeah. <laughs> no one? Let's close this portion. I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 0-19-7 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the two slash 22 slash 19 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to his title only. I'll second. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Ordinance 0 19 8 10 7 amend 2019 salary ordinance for TWU is being tabled for March 5th. Go to the next ordinance. 0 19 9 10.8. 
Amend Chapter 104, Commercial and Industrial Maintenance Code, Sections 11 and 12, Service of Notice of Violation and Request for Hearing and Summons. <coughs> Ordinance numbered 0 19 9, introduced and passed on first reading on 2519 and published according to law, is now being taken up for further consideration and public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 2819 is submitted, and it is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and that copies were available to the general public upon request. Title of Ordinance, an ordinance of the Township of Howell amending Chapter 104, Commercial and Industrial Maintenance Code, Sections 11 and 12, Service of Notice of Violation, Request for Hearings, Summons of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. I'm this, making, oh, sorry. Would anybody like to discuss this ordinance? May I have a motion? May I make a motion that ordinance number 0-19-9 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the 2 19 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. I second. Roll call. Mr. Bonovich? Yes. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Sure. <laughs> you read. A motion to introduce number 091 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the February 2nd, 2019 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with no notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it'll be further considered for final passage after a public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on March 5th, to, um, I'm sorry, March 5th? March 5th, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time at the Municipal Building. Uh, forgive me, I did not read the ordinance, so I'll read that in 0-19-1, uh, 11.1, oh. <laughs> .1, 2019 salary ordinance for non-union non employees. Forgive me. Can I have a second? I second. Title of Ordinance. An ordinance setting forth and amending and supplementing the salary range schedule for the salaries of certain officers and employees of the Township of Howell. <coughs> Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Um. No, not on introduction of ordinance. Mr. Bonovich? Uh, well, I'm not against giving anyone raises, but uh, some of these maximum ranges, they don't coincide with the 2019 salaries. Um, I'm afraid these higher ranges will allow several increases without our approval, without council approval, so no. Ms. Richmond? Yes. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? The maximum, the maximum ranges on the salary ranges, uh -huh. they're over several years. So I would rather us come back year to year. Those maximum ranges should be lower. I, I they. Do you have given a them, Is there a figure though, John? That you that you have in mind? Well, each one is individual. You have to go each individual but, but position. We should maybe talk about this. I mean, if there's a, if there's a number you have in mind. Is there a number? And I'm not sure that the, I, I'm not sure that that's what what John is saying. Because I I also reviewed, uh, I asked for information because I wanted to make sure that if we were going to have salary increase, that we were at least being consistent with other towns, right? So I I asked, and we all received mm -hmm. salary ordinances from other towns, right? Right. Was but was mm -hmm. any of the salaries that we received? So were they we didn't receive the salaries. We received, received salary well, ordinances. So, so wait, if, just give me two more seconds. Sure. I have, I have questions. Yeah. So we, we received the ordinances. So I sifted through. I began to sift through. I mean, one email was over 20 pages. So, I mean, it was a lot of towns. Right. 
A um, couple of things that I, you know, I personally was looking at. One, you know, are the towns the same sizes? So I was going back and forth trying to look at the towns to see how many employees were in each of the towns, how many, you know, how what the size of the town was. So it was very cumbersome for me to keep, to go, I haven't really finished the whole project, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, so I just, I, I kind of, I agree. A salary range is great. But where did we get the ranges from? What percentage was used to, to increase the range? Um, which town did we actually go with? Did we use one town? Or did we use six different towns? And did that mean did we just pick and choose the numbers? Well, we received, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong here, we received how many different, how many towns did we receive of, of the... Three we, emails worth. <laughs> and after the last meeting, we, you would ask for yes, samples absolutely. from other towns. So. I, I, asked for the, I asked for information from other towns to, to verify that any of the ranges that we wanted to increase were equal to towns of our size, whether it be employee-wise, whether, you know, there has to be something right some percentage or something that you use to say I could use this town's information but I can't use this town's information you're not matching apples and apples sometimes if a town is but, <coughs> mayor you sat with the HR director she was the one that compiled all these numbers yes so and I received I we was received under the impression them, she explained that to you no how we she received, came up with I well no not not really that's why I asked for that's why I asked for those documents so again, I was got the documents last week, similar to everybody else, and I'm still in the process of reviewing them because I'm trying to get all the information. I mean, I'm sure everybody out there wants to make sure that if we're going to put out a salary ordinance, that the ordinance commensurate with a, a town equal to our size, and that we're not just that we could say, okay, in 2018 and 19, we're going to out the. I'm making the numbers up, so please just get the concept that I'm trying to put forth. We say, let's. I'm going to use Middletown only because I know the town is bigger than us. Okay, so I'm going to say, so we use Middletown, and for example, our numbers are similar, but they're they're 10 percent higher than we are in salary ranges. Again, making it up, everybody. So I want to I want to look down look at the documents and say okay in 2018-19 I'm not going to go above X number because if we if we allow and I'm sorry but if we allow such a large range in my mind that gives that how does that affect the two percent when we have to do salary increases at the end of the year and we try to keep everybody in that range if if from the difference. I think from, I forget which position it was, but it was a 78% change from the, what was on the document to the changed amount. To me, that was a high number, which is why I'm really still looking at everything. So I cannot vote yet, yes on this. Brian, what was the cap? What was the, the, the range that you gave us? I'm in the email right now. I don't see it it's, here. There are multiple ranges. Each position has a min and a max, which is perfect. That's what you want. The, the maxes have increased, mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that the increases were commensurate with other towns. Right. So, But there I, are a lot of towns. It's a lot there, of There work. are. It's and a are, lot and, to look And I, I actually spent, and it, it was a lot of work. Uh, I did it. I went through it, did my own independent research, and I found that the averages were comparable to other big towns. We are, we are actually where the, the largest town, I believe by area in Monmouth County, mm -hmm. we're the second largest town by population in Monmouth County, or the 32nd largest town in the state. Um, I looked all over the place. I spent hours on this because it was something that came up on, on uh, social media. I got emails. My friends were asking me about this one. I did a lot of homework, and I hope everybody up here did too. I hope so. It's a big deal. Um, my research came to that the salary ranges were absolutely commensurate with other towns of our size. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm, I'm, my question to the council would be, what research shows otherwise? I, I, I'm taking a different stance. Right now, these maximum ranges don't coincide with, with the salaries being paid right now. It's too much of a bump. You know, they should be more reflective of what we're, do, what we're paying right now. So it should be less? 
Yeah, they should how, be less. How, Those how, maximum ranges should be less. Well, how much? They less? should be equivalent. Well, you know what? So that's, every, just, that's a problem. Every the, year we should come back. And visit this. We should not say there's an extra thirty thousand here, and then we don't get to we don't we get a budget next year and a year after that. We're not going to have a say. Well, how much less are we talking about? Because we have an ordinance here that we want to get. We, yeah, we have work yeah, to and, do. And, we, and, we've got a budget coming up. We got a lot of work to do. That's great. I voted no. I, I want to move past this, and I want to know uh, with the and I also I want to know about the council how they feel also. Pam. You know, Excuse me, I'm sorry. So to this answer your question, deal. it's a big deal. I, I did do some research. I've read what you've read. I've asked questions, and I, I seem to favor with Tommy that if you look at the whole grand scheme and its benefits, its pension, it's all that. Take that into consideration. How about hours worked? I know the contract says, and again, did my homework. 8:30 to 4:30. I can guarantee if you come into this building, most of our professionals are here way after that. Weekends, answering emails. So to be fair, you know, the waiving of the waiving of the benefits, saving the township twenty thousand dollars, doing all the work. Um, I, I just feel that that it is comparable to the bigger townships. And the research was given to us and, and I, I, I think I think it's fair. And also, there are, I think, there are, how many employees do we have? 300 employees? Approximately, yes. And to be fair, Tommy, I, I think from what I read as well, I think you, um, you have 18 departments under you, Brian? How many? Yes. 18 department heads. The normal for a, a township, I think, like Middletown, probably has a seven or eight department heads underneath you. So 18 of them are reporting to you. Is this conversation about Brian? Or no, I'm, conversation I'm asking about Brian the group? because that is who, this, no, that's who would have the answers. The, the, no, no, it's the whole group. It's the whole. Okay. <laughs> but again, he's the one that has the answers. It's non-union position. If well, I can give some clarification. As, thank you. As we've done with many of these other ordinances, there's a lot of ordinances that need updating over time. Historically, Howell has done... Uh, separate salary ordinances for each individual position. This, we're just trying to consolidate them into one master ordinance that will most likely re be reviewed every year. Um, as you had three emails worth of uh, attachments, uh, examples of other towns, that's pretty much how they've done it. Uh, I know the first time we were looking to introduce this, um, Councilman Bonovich got copies of all of our salary ordinances, how they are today. And it's not efficient, it's not effective. So that's the reason for this. We're trying to wrap it into one ordinance. Was this ordinance discussed? I, does everyone know that you've already voted on this and it's already been passed because the three of you voted on it? Do you realize? Fair enough, but you also got to make comments and I think we deserve oh, the no, same absolutely. right, right? I okay, thought, I just want to be clear because I, I don't. You no, no, so Mayor, was, Mayor, oh, no. This, this oh, okay. is, Mayor, this has been a topic of discussion for the last week, and um, I wanted to express my thoughts. I want to let the town know that I researched the heck out of this thing, and I spent a lot of time on it, uh, more time than maybe I should have. And, and the fact that some people were saying up here that they didn't have enough time to, to look at this stuff, I'm, I'm quite shocked. That? I think you did. No, I did not say that. No, I think you said that I you said didn't, I you're not done most, reviewing no, it. No, no, no. I am correlating, and I am making grids. Don't judge. No, no, I'm not judging you. You said before, okay, that you didn't finish looking at the material. Right? With all I due said respect. I have not completed compiling my information. It's the same thing. That being said, Tom, do you want to argue at the day, or so do you want to make a good point? No. Well, no, I don't want to make a good point. What okay, I'm saying. So then no. you want to uh, argue. Uh, you know, he, to be fair, he not doesn't one, want to argue. But other. you know, you and I'm Councilman Bonovich both got no. I am not. Both of you both got to express after you voted no, which you're obviously entitled to. Okay, but to be fair to the public, okay, and to be fair to everyone out there, we also get to do the same. No and what is and, asking you not to, Pam? Okay. What I'm asking is, what I'm saying is. But you're implying, okay. First of all, to be clear, Tommy's right. The emails had gone back and forth. You said you never got them. We tabled this a couple of times. Okay? So to be fair, Tommy is correct. This should have been dealt with a while ago. 
and it has not been. We keep tabling it and tabling it, and if Tommy had the time, and I'm a single mother of, of two children, I work, and I had the time. To, to be, so be happy. fair, I'm so happy. To be fair, it, it should have been done. Oh, it should have uh, been. Let, let me, to be fair, <laughs> the mayor asked for the actual salaries for the surrounding towns, and what she was given was the salary ordinances of, of the surrounding towns. No, to be fair, she said she never got the email because her I emails did not were get clocked. I the initial email. I have okay. to be honest with you. Okay. I had a problem today, which I spoke with Brian about, so please, Please, if you don't know what is reality. That was reality. The reality was email was not going in or out. Yes. I, okay. All right. So are we right. done? Yes. Or do I want to continue. No, Tommy, please, am, you were actually speaking. No, it was, about, it, it, it's, it, I think it got a little too hot. I, I want to go back and scale back and breathe a little bit. Um, reasonable minds can differ, right? It's 10 o'clock, Tom. Reasonable, well, uh, let, me, let me finish. Reasonable minds can differ. Right, And I'm not saying that you guys are wrong and that it's terrible. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that I did the research, spent the time on this, um, and I came to the conclusion, and I want the town to know, after a lot of work, that these numbers that are in our ordinances, are, that the proposal is absolutely commensurate with towns of our size across the state of New Jersey. Could absolutely. you show me that directly? Absolutely. Because that's what I, I, I asked. Oh, wait you. a minute. Wait a minute. I asked for that directly. So here's the thing, and this is this is my point. I have no issue with anybody getting a salary increase. As a matter of fact, I have said many times in the past, if you deserve it, you should get it. So that's not what this is about for me. So please. I didn't say it was about that. I want that. to explain what this is about for me. I run a business, and so I do this same thing every year. I do commensurate salaries from three different areas. And then the board of directors gets to look at those three separate documents, and the board says, okay, this is equal to who we are, and so that's, this, that's what we're going to go with. My question was, we received 20 to 30 different towns. Which one did we go with? Could you answer that There's question? There's not one. No. Ah, no, I, ah, I, ah. We're not, that's the point. No, no, no. We're not Mr. going Russo. with one. No, Mr. no, no. Russo, Mayor, I must be. I one. must complete my thought, okay? You can't pick and choose from 30 different towns or 20 different towns or five different towns where you want to pick and okay, choose no, the salaries. I didn't. So if you take a commensurate town, then you use the salaries that are from that town. Mayor, I didn't say that I picked one, all right? I didn't I'm say you did either. I asked... Which who, one did I pick? Which one I did... You, which one did Jill pick? Did she pick one town? No. no she okay. Us a, That's no. my point. Of course well, not. Well, I'm not... Of course not? I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm not saying... Can you... I'm, I'm very confused right now. What, so I'm very confused. All I'm saying was I looked at the emails that we received... Which had all Tommy, the Tommy, I respectfully disagree. Can I'm not telling you what I did. I'm telling you that I got the emails. I compiled my research. I had a bunch of different towns, and I found that what's in our ordinance, the proposal, is commensurate with the other towns, with the, 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 the totality, with the collective. That's balance. not. That's real. Respectfully, that is not how you do a salary ordinance. A, a salary, a salary min and max, not ordinance min and max. Respectfully disagree with that process. Then how do we do it? I think I just said it. Uh, um, you need to use one town, not six no, towns. I, see, I disagree. I disagree. I, 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 I disagree uh, wholeheartedly, Mayor. Okay. Right. I think we should look We're at... We're allowed we, to disagree, we, Tom. We should, not, we should look at everything. We should look at everything. Look at all big towns with 50-plus thousand residents, okay? And look at, look at everything, uh, and collectively. And we can, we can make an, a, an educated decision. Don't just pick one. That's just my opinion. I mean, I know you, you've been doing. I don't do this stuff, but I would imagine, and this is what if I were, you know, and I, I get to do this. I'm one of the council people, and I have a say. I think we should look at the entire totality. Look at all the big towns, 50,000 plus residents. We got a ton of acreage here, 300 plus employees. You know, look to Freehold. You know, look to Jackson. Look to Middletown. They're right in line, Mayor. Right in line. <coughs> That's all. May I? Please. As this is an introduction, and uh, I'm going to presume that we don't have information that would entitle everybody to make the decision they think they need to make because they don't have the background. Um, 
I mean, I thought you said that you took like three three areas when don't, you did don't, yours. Don't don't and where and I think then I just heard you know you take one town, and so so why don't why don't we do the intelligent thing so that the next time we look at this we can actually make a decision. Let's go down the list. What town do we pick? Who do we model after? Let me see. We got the chief of police. What town should we look at? Uh, next is the chief financial officer. What town do we look at? <laughs> One for everybody? Respectfully, that's not our job. It's not our job to investigate the different towns, to find out which town we are commensurate with, to then utilize the salaries. If they are, if ours are less, we should absolutely increase them to that, that town. I have, I'm not saying not to do that. Right. All I'm saying is I'm asking for a reasonable explanation of where did these salary numbers ranges come from. And if they came from all these multiple 30 different towns or 40 different towns, how did you choose them then? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. did you just say, all right, I'm, I'm going to just pick and this is the job I'm going to take from that town? Or, oh, so... Job title ABC is higher in, in Interlaken than it is in, in Manalapan, so I'm going to take that one from Interlaken, but I'm going to use Manalapan for a different one. That was Agreed. my thought process. So, so in my mind, you can't do that because then you're only just picking higher salary ranges. All right, so we have a formula that's not going to work. So here's the question. What formula... You already do approved this. You already, it's already passed. This is an intro. Introduction. But you passed it. Fine. And it's an intro. And now we need And when it comes, right. and when you come to vote on the second time, people could vote now. Brian, so would it be, oh, excuse is, me, Deputy Mayor, would you be able to find out from Jill what formula she uses? She sent it. I, she, she sent the towns. I'm, she sent the towns. Yeah. All right, but then you're asking those what formula do, is she using, right? <laughs> That's what you're asking. I mean, she I might have those. Okay. Can, can she once again send it to the governing body and we can. What is she sending? The formula she's using that you want to know what she, what formula she's using to come up with these these salary ranges. We're assuming she's doing multiple, but you think we should just pick one, correct? I'm thinking we should utilize the information right. from a town that is similar to. But we ours. need that information first, right? We need to know I what town. Okay, Brian, can we follow up with that? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are we okay? Mayor, your vote was not yes, so I'm going to mark it down as no. <laughs> you said I can't vote on this, so I just want to be clear your vote Sorry, is I vote no. Is a no. Thank you. Sorry. And respectfully, I'm going to ask one more time. What do we need from our professionals so that everybody's comfortable when they make the, the next vote on the ordinance when it's done? What do we need? What else, what else do we ask for? No, you said you wanted you know. caps. You said you wanted smaller ranges. Or I want the more reflective of the current salaries. I don't want to look three, four, five years out. I want these to be tighter. Can we get I, that? I want, us, I want to. Be, I want us to revisit this next year and say, all right, this needs to be bumped up. I don't believe that they should be that wide. Can we get the information John needs, Ryan? Sure. So, I, so I, 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 if, I'm if, still. I'm kind of. If I could help, maybe, right? Just because I run a lot of data, so I think that the information that would be needed would be what the current, the current, Howell's current ranges, and if you choose a town, whichever town you choose to, to, mo to model your salary by, whether, whatever town that is, then the ranges that they, we have should be next to the ranges that they have so that we can then sit down and make a decision on. Thank you. God bless you. How, how bad are, our ranges. Are our ranges totally out of whack? Are they out of whack by 5%? Are they out of whack by 3%? Thank you. I think that's something important to know. Okay. So you want it based on the current employees. So if there's a change in an employee, we're going to be reintroducing it. It's so by title. It's, it's job mm -hmm. position right. and range. It's job position and range which when I spoke to Jill, that's what she said that this was about. Yes. When she said, what she told me what it was about was that everything was in different places and she wanted to bring everything in. But previous council didn't want to vote on this because the ranges were, were a little 
they were more than what they wanted as well. So it's not just, you know, we're not just asking. I just, everybody in the town should know where we got the information from. So when we do raise a salary or we raise the range of that title, that they feel comfortable that we did our due diligence and our fiduciary responsibility is correct. That's all I'm asking. Okay. One more question. I'm questioned the, out. Okay, I'm not. When this list comes to us, we're going to have a title with the person's making now? No, no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be oh. Teresa Berger, $20,000 a year. Doesn't, that's not what it is. I didn't know. Not a name, a title. Top title. So, so Teresa so, Berger is an uh, IT, uh -huh. IT oh. coordinator. Currently, it's a dollar to $10. In, in Sioux City, it's $25 max. We're off by $20. I don't, I, the I don't reason for like the range is if there's a change that. in personnel, we don't have to reintroduce because there's going to be varying experience and education levels. I understand. I absolutely understand. But you still have to have a range. Right. So we can, can we do position, current salary? That's what it should be. Well, that's what I just said. And you went, no, no, no. No, position? by position, I thought you were going... No. Position. Each person's. No, no, just what, you know, the position, the current salary, and then um, even if you applied this range to that, I mean, it would tell if it you. Worked, it worked, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. I, the council had the same issue. I just want whatever the question is, I need it answered. <laughs> Because if you're not getting your email, you are getting your email. No, if you I just got, got it today. today got so then I don't even know how you went through all that stuff if you just got it today. Your eyes should be falling out of your head. I spent hours on those things that Jill sent. No, I... Oy. But, um, so my point is, um, regardless that it was just an intro, I still think that the information, we need something that is going to qualify people's thoughts so that they think they're making a decision based on real data. Absolutely. So. And also just off that, um, you know, when the final comes around, I want to have everything that I need, everything that I need. I thought we had enough information, but if we need more, let's do it. Um, so, so position, and I want to iron this out now because again, I, I want to I have, know. again, I want to have everything we need before we do it. This is a big deal. Position, job title, Range. Current, current, current salary. Current salary. So you're asking so, for this ordinance to be reintroduced again, since we're now going to be changing it. I just want to make sure I understand. I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? Everyone's asking for this ordinance to be changed now. So, are we then reintroducing it, since no. we're now changing what has been approved? I thought I was, act, I was. I thought I was only asking for the backup. If the backup could come in two or three days, then if there's another issue, then that could be brought to you. But uh, you know, we have to. I've ask. sent countless emails asking what questions I know. each of you have over the last six it. weeks. I read it. The I three times it. that this was scheduled to be introduced. I mean, I, you're I, correct. I, Absolutely. And you, and you, you I, I thought I was. I thought I was clarifying it by asking for what I just. Oh, Brian, asked and, for. and you I'm did give to us. Help, not uh, anger. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I just want to figure out what else is out there that we, that we would need to make an informed decision. I don't think, and I'm, I'm sitting here wrapping my brain around this, I don't think there's any more information that I need to make a decision. Um, and since it was passed, I'll leave it at that. But if there's anything else, Mayor, you need, let me know. Well, it wasn't passed. It's introduced. Introduced. I'm sorry. Wrong one. Okay. Are we ready? So did we settle it? Did anything? we answer Brian's question? Apparently not. Procedurally, Brian, this is... You know what? So, so, Brian, maybe you and I could have a discussion. Sure. And then we could sit down and really get what the data that we need so we could make this work instead of sitting here and pontificating all night. Let me know when you're available. One day this week, because I'm not next week. I uh, am leaving at 4 o'clock this morning. Okie dokie, then. We have to do it by telephone. We could do that. Well, I'll be, no, I can't. <laughs> It's long distance, very long. You gonna pay for it? I'll lend you myself. <laughs> are we ready? Well, where are we? 
Oh. Okay. 0 19 10, 11 2, amend chapter 139 69, registration fees for recreation. Motion to introduce. Make sure I'm on the right one. Ordinance number 0 19 10 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the 222 19 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title, and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on 3519 at 7.30 p.m., prevailing time in the municipal building. Second. Oh. I'm sorry. Title of ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 24, Chapter 139, Section 69. Subsection B, entitled Registration Fees for Recreation of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Hell. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Yes. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes. DRL-19-11, 11.3, amend Chapter 2, Alliance to Prevent Alcoholism and Drug Abuse. May I have a motion? A motion to introduce ordinance number 01911 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the February 2nd, February 2nd. I think we've passed February 2nd. Am I reading this? In the two, the 20, not the 20. <laughs> February 22nd, 2019 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that will be further considered for final passage after a public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on March 5th, 2019, 7.30 prevailing time at the Municipal Building. A second. Title of Ordinance. An Ordinance Amending Chapter 2, Article 7, Section 47 entitled Alliance to Prevent Alcoholism and Drug Abuse of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Hell. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Yes. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes. Ordinance number, Ordinance 0 19 12 11.4, amend Chapter 188, Land Use, Article 16, Planning Board, Section 154, entitled or uh, alternates. Somebody read. Motion to introduce ordinance number 0 19 12 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the 222 19 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on 3519 at 7.30 p.m., prevailing time in the Municipal Building. Second. Title of Ordinance. An ordinance amending Chapter 188, Land Use, Article 16, Planning Board, Section 154, entitled Alternates of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howe. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Yes. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes. Is there any unfinished business? No, ma'am. Thank you. Um, okay, so there's a meeting day for tomorrow for McKenzie House. Remember, if there's uh, snow and we can't get here, the meeting date will be changed. Brian, what date was that? March 5th. 4 March 5th be at 4? 4? 4 p.m. Right before the council right. meeting on the 5th. Correct. Okay. Um, then the next, obviously, the next meeting is March 5th. 6.30 is executive. 7.30 is regular session. And then March 19th, 6.30 is executive, and 7.30 is regular session. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Yes. Ms. Richmond. Yes. Mr. Russo. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Berger. Yes.